The next section that I'm going to explain is XML and JSON. So we are going to learn what is XML and what is JSON. So I'm going to teach you about the concept and then how to understand the REST framework. And then you know, we're going to make a feeder and you know, we'll un try to understand the simple Ajax. Okay, so there are three parts of this chapter. It's very long. So you will learn at this, this tree. The first is XML and JSON. And then you will learn about the API. What is API? It, the Django REST framework. And then you will learn about the asynchronous JavaScript and XML, or we call it Ajax. So database frequently fails to operate synchronously when there is a data exchange in the web. And XML is a way to show the documents, but not the data. So when you have the HTML, you can show what is the value in your data, but you cannot do more with the document or with the data itself. So there is a need to use a software or hardware independent tool for storing and transporting the data in the web. So the HTML is just to show, not transporting the data, not storing the data. So the basic format is XML. So many people still use XML. XML means extensible markup language. So which was generated based on the text HTML. So if you know the text in HTML, in HTML, we use text like E to indicate paragraph, body to indicate the body. So the XML will use also the similar text but in the different way. And later on, the development of JavaScript is getting more attention by creating JSON. JSON means the JavaScript object notation so that's why we learn the javascript first before we go to the javascript object notation okay so as i mentioned to you xml is the extensible markup language and it is a way of structuring data or well, some people say that xml is a data format so there are some specification. You can look at this website, the W3ORG. So they already specify the XML specification. So this is the first uh, extensible markup language. And uh, there are many things that you can look at this about the XML. Okay, so it's very long. If you want to read all the details, you can go to this site. And also we have the schema, XML schema specification, and you can see the standard of the schema. So this kind of uh, schema is similar with the database schema, the DB schema, but they are using another kind of standard for only XML. So I think I will not discuss this the standardization because of the time limitation. So if you want to know more, you can go to this one. Maybe I will just give you a simple example. JSON is another kind of data format. We call it JSON. It is the JavaScript object notation. It is also a way of structuring the data. And JSON is a data format, and you can look at the specification in this documentation. So they use the 
uh, some people they try to make the JSON specification. So let's see. So they call it the JavaScript object notation data interchange format. So if you want to look at this one, yeah, there are many uh, updates about the uh, JSON. So I will not discuss all the details. So let's look at only how we can use it. And for the JSON, we also have the schema. As I mentioned to you, in the DB, we have the database schema. So the JSON and the XML, they also have schema. So you can look at those things. So until this day, okay, so until 2023, if you look at this data, so people are still using XML, but JSON is more than the XML. What about CSV? Yeah, somehow CSV is still okay, but if you look at the graph, the blue color is the JSON. Yeah, people are using JSON more than the XML and CSV. So let's see what is the example of XML. Have you ever heard about ESPN? Okay, so this is a very famous news company about sports. So in the so I, I try to figure out what is the best way to give you this example, and I found out that ESPN uh, give the XML data. So I use this as our example. <clears throat> if you look at the link, they have the news feed. So the news feed that they use here, you can look at this link. If you open this news feed, so this is the news today. So they have a lot of news. And the news of the spot, they make a kind of category, like the top headlines and maybe some of you are interesting on the NFL or with the NBA, MLB, NHL, motorsport, soccer, and so on. So they have different kind of news feed. So in every news feed, they will have their own uh, kind of way to access it. So for example, So with this news feed, so let's see in the top headline. So this is the XML file. When you open the news feed on the top headlines, it will show the XML file. And then yeah, we will look at the details. What is the meaning by this one? So there is a title and then there is a description. This is the latest top news from the ESPN. And then mm, this is the last build date, which is uh, 11 May, 3 a.m. and so on. Okay. So this is the type of XML file and this save the data in the web. 
and we can extract it or we can usually we call it as scrap so if you uh, learn the data science how to scrap the data then we can scrap this kind of data so there's another way to store the data for example we can look at this tweets twitter so json is used to store the location of tweets maybe not the first one maybe the second one if i'm not mistaken so this data utilize the json to understand how many android users how many iphone users i think blackberry is not outdated but yeah they still have the information about the users so this is about how many users who use twitter and the mobile device based on the operating system uh, wait a moment. i think i got the data Okay, so I think they already blocked this one. So they just give us only the visualization. So last time I can uh, have the JSON, so we can extract or we can scrap the data. So let's look at the details, how we can know about XML. So XML is a kind of document and yeah, we can see from this one, it is the XML document contains data about a book. So we can see the title, authors, date of publication, and publisher. So this is one book. If you see this one, we have the tag. The tag is similar with HTML, but the tag name is different. The tag name will be the column name. So here I have book. It means it is a collection of book. Or maybe we can say this is the table of book. And then I have title. Then if it is started with title and then it is ended with title, you know that in the HTML tag, we will finish or we will end the tag with the stress and also with the same technique so the format in xml is the same with html so here i'm going to put the title of the book as parsing techniques and then i have the authors let's suppose the authors are more than one then i can specify the first author is this guy so I make the tag author and then I make the first author is this guy and the second author is this guy. And then I will close the tag. And this date is about the publication date and this publisher is about the publication, the publisher name. So if you look at this data, actually you can have similar with this kind of thing so the title is here the author one is here the other two is this one the date is this one and the publisher is this one what about if we use Jaden? so this Jaden follows the format if you understand dictionary in Python, okay, the concept is similar and the symbol is also similar. It uses the curly ring and 
we have the key. The key means this is the, maybe in the ERD we call it, this is the table name. So I have book. And then the first book that I have has a collection of this data. And this data is the same with the table shown here. So the title is the key. And then I have the value, parsing techniques. The authors, because I have multiple authors, author one and author two, so I can put it into the list, like this one. And then the first author is Dick John, comma, serial. This is the second author. And then about the publication date, it is the date, and this is the value, 2007. And then I have the publisher, so this is the value of the publisher. So with the same data, we can make this data into different format. We can have the XML. We can also have the JSON format. <laughs> so when we have the XML and JSON, we can look at side by side. So the book tag is the same with the book key in the JSON. And then when we define the title, it shows the same with the title in JSON. And then when we have the authors, we can look at the authors here, but the representation is a little bit different. In the authors with JSON, we can use list like this one, but in the authors of XML, we use tag for several items. The date and publisher will be the same as the other. So in the JSON, we have a kind of list to indicate the authors. Now let's try to understand how we can use the XML and JSON. Let's create another Django project. So I do not want to use the existing one. Let's make a, another Django project. And because this Django project will be related to the REST framework. So let me make the Django name as basic REST. Let me close. And I will make a new project, Django. And I will make basic class. Okay. <clears throat> Now, uh, I would like to make the simple XML and JSON for you. So let's create a folder or Python package. Let's just give a name testing data. And I'm going to create uh, several Python files. So the Python files will be writing XML, reading XML, writing JSON, and reading JSON. Okay, so let's make here, I will make a uh, Python packets. Okay, we can see there are two different uh, symbol, the directory and Python packets. So if it is a directory, then you can manage different files like JavaScript files or image or text files. If you are making Python packets, means all the files will be related to the Python file. Because I'm going to make Python files, so I will make Python packets. And let's make the name testing data. 
And then whenever you have the Python package, it will show you one file which is in it. Okay. This in it means the constructor. So if we call the directory, then the Django or the Python will know that it is a place to run several Python files. Okay, now let's make this four files. Let's make the Python file uh, writing XML. I will make another Python file reading XML. I will make another Python file writing JSON. And I will make another Python file reading JSON. Okay. Now let's try to make the first XML. You can copy and paste this code into the oh, writing XML. <laughs> So uh, let's look at the first <clears throat> part. You can run this writing XML. You can go to the file, in this case, the writing XML file, and then you can just run the writing XML. When you finish with this writing XML, you will see that there is a new file here, book data. XML. Can you see the data? Then you can open it. So the data now is in the XML format, but all of them are in the same line. Okay. So I give you the Okay, before you open the code, actually, you can just reformat code. Okay, so let me close this one. So you can click here. And then you can click this one. Reformat code. When you reformat code, yeah. are you going to reformat the selected files? Okay. And then you can open again. So now the format will be in the form of three. Like this one. Any problems? So far so good. Okay. Now let's look at this XML. How we and create this XML. So I'm making this simple XML. Uh, we have the writing XML. We have three data. The data number one, data number two, and data number three. So here I have the import. The import means I'm going to use the element tree in the XML. And I will like to make it as the alias ET. So ET is the element tree. And then I will like to make the root. The root means yeah, the first part, or we call we call it this is the what is the name of this data. So I want to say that this is a collection of books. 
and then I can determine what is the sub element of the hook. So let's say maybe I'm yeah, making just hook to say this is the element. And yeah, the data one, it contains of several information like the title, authors, and then the date and publisher. So the same with the one that we saw before. And then yeah, you will see that this sub element hook here will have title and the text is title. The sub element book it will have date and the text is 2013. The sub element book it has publisher and the text is free. But for the second, here I would like to make a kind of multiple data. So the sub element book of authors there will be another element then the elements of authors will have another text which is author and the first author is john and the second author is bob so this is the first data and then I have another data. So you can specify the same like the data number one. And I have the data number three. So I also specify the same as the data number two, number two and number one. At the end, let's put all the elements in the room. It means so all the data that we have, we put it back in the book. And then let's Type them into one file, which is book data etc. So you will get this. So this is the first data, and then this is the second data, and this is the third data. You can see that the authors. There are two authors of the book, and it's used in another sub element. So this is the element or the root, and then this is a sub element. This is another sub element, and this is another sub element. Now I want to read this data. How can I read this data? Then you need to understand the structure. So what is the first structure? Okay, I know that the first is book. So I need to define the root. And then after I know the root, I need to define what is the next sub element. Then yeah. that's why we need to have a kind of schema. But but usually the data like what you saw in the ESPN. So they don't have the schema. So they don't share the schema. So they share only this data. Then you need to figure out by yourself what is the fact. What is the element that you want to get? Now, let's say I know that the data with the simple example like this one. Okay, I know the element is book and this element is title, authors, and etc. So let's try how we can read it. So let's put this code into the reading.xml. Okay, reading xml.py. Let's run. If you finish with the copy and paste. Then you can show the data after reading the XML.
So the first we are going to use et, which is the element three, and then I'm going to parse book data dot xml. It means I'm going to read this book data dot xml, and then let's get the root. So everything of the xml will start from the root. So get root, and then we put it on the root, and we will check one by one. We will check for every element that are available. So we will check first the element of the root. After we check the element of the root, we will check another element, which is the sub element. So we, because we know that the book the other XML, we have one element and we have a sub element. So it means we have only two levels. But here in the authors, we have another level. So you can just have this. This is the first level. And this is the next level, so the second level. And after that, I will make another kind of loop for the element of authors. So if the sub element tag is not authors, I will just show it. But if it is not, I'm oh, sorry, if it is authors, then I will have another one. So the functions will be multiple for. It depends how many sub elements in your Excel. And when you print the data, yeah, the data will be something like this. So the title is Python, and the author is John Pop, and then the date is 2013, the publisher is Springer, and so on. Next is, let's make with the JSON. I would like to copy this code into the writing JSON. As I mentioned before, you can utilize the dictionary in Python. Let me run this. So after you run this code, you will see there's a file, a new file, bookdata.json. So you can open it. But again, all the data is in one line. Let me close this one. I think you can do the same. Okay. So choose the reformat code. You can click on the file and then right click and then reformat the code. After you OK, then let's open the file again. So the data will be shown as a tree like this. Now, I have the writing JSON file, and you can see, first I'm going to import JSON, because we are going to create a JSON file. And for the first data, I would like to make it as a blank dictionary. If we know about dictionary, the dictionary contains key and value. So I would like to create a new key, which is book. And let's make it as blank. And this is a list. And I would like to append the first data. The first data in the book is title Python. Authors is John and Bob. And date is 2013. And publisher is Springer. So we know that the authors have more than one author, so I can utilize list. In the second data, I also append in the title, author, state, and publisher will be like this one. And I have another data, which is the third data, 
and this is the information and we can just utilize the writing function in python that is how we can create the book data with w which is to write and we use json dot dump dump means we want to write into a json format and what we are going to write is the data and the data will be delivered to the book data dot json so you can see this one we have book and in the book it is a list so you can see it is a list because we use the square bracket and then we have the dictionary so to this dictionary it is one book and we have some relevant information like the title authors and then the others are two and then date and publisher and so on okay now i would like to read the json so you can copy this code and let's go to the reading json So I'm going to read the book data.json and I'm I'm loading it. Okay, I'm loading the JSON file into one variable in Python which is data. And we know that this data is a dictionary. So you can look at the key and value and the first data book actually it is in the Okay, it is in the list. Okay, so you need to check this on the element on the list. So we're checking the element of the list is using just a for loop p in the data book, and then let's look at the details. So if I know that the title p title exists, so I would like to check what is the value of the title. Now I have another for loop to indicate that if there are multiple others, so the others are more than one, then I will do a loop and then I will check every of the other. For the date and the publisher, we just can call the key value. So if you run this, We will see the title, Python, authors, John, Bob, and then the date and the publisher will be shown. Okay. When you see this code, which one is better? So both XML and JSON actually they are meta language. Meta language means yeah people try to make that language to uh, create the documents to save all the data. And yeah, XML is a language that you use to create other languages. So for example, on the previous slides we saw how to use XML to create a book language. For the JSON, it's also a language that you use to create another language. Because in the JSON, you also use the current data structure to create the data. And we have the book, title, author, and so forth. In the XML, we can see as a tree. That's why we utilize the element tree to create the XML. The tree yeah, start with the book, and then we have 
the children, okay, title, authors, date, and publisher. And then for every of this child, we have a value. For this child, we have two children, and each of this child have the value. For the Jason, it is also a tree. Okay, we can make it as a tree, and we can see that the book is the root or the main key, and then the other notes are the keys after the book. And then we can see this is the data. So you already learned the if you join the data structure, okay. so the JSON and the XML use three data structure. So the three data structure has been well studied by computer scientists and the mathematicians. And there are many well-known algorithms for processing and traversing trees. So if you want to look at the data in the XML and JSON, actually now the algorithms like the JSON.dump, and JSON dot load, they utilize the three algorithms. And both XML and JSON are able to leverage this. So three can be used for the data as well as the schema. Okay. So I'm because of the time limitation, I didn't discuss the schema in this class. Okay. But let me show you just a brief schema for this. Schema represent the structure of the data. So XML schema show the structure of the data in the XML format, and JSON schema display the structure of the data in the JSON format. So let's look at this one. This is an example of the XML schema for the book. We have the data, the XML data, and we need to define what are the data. You know, whenever you create your DB, okay. so as you know, we will discuss next week on our first meeting about your DB. So when you create your DB, you need to know what is the attribute, and then what is the data type, and then how many places you want to allocate for that data for example we know in the our example char field okay the character field we have let's say 200 then we want to specify 200 space for the characters so it is also the same when you have the xml schema it means you want to specify what is the element name so here we have the complex type, it means this complex type is the place to allocate all the attributes. And this is a kind of sequence. So this will be the first, and this is will be the next, this will be the next, next, and so on. So it is a sequence. And the first element is title. And we can see that the title will be in the form of string. The second element is author. So we have another complex type. It means we will have another sequence to indicate the authors. Now we can say that the authors is also a string for the data type and let's say that the maximum authors for the book is five so i can specify the maximum authors is five and i will have the date date is a type of year and then i have the publisher and the minimum occurrence is zero. It means maybe some books are not available in a particular publisher. And I can have a simple type. It means, yeah, 
the user can choose among the existing publisher and this one is restricted to this three value so i have the value springer i have the value mit press i have the value Harvard press and then yeah if the user can choose among this one they can choose it but if there are some other publisher not available here then they can just put none and this enumeration means if you choose one then it will be springer if you choose two it will be mit press if you choose three it will be alpha press so they specify all those details like that one and this will be the ending of the element what about the json scheme in the json schema is also the same we need to define what is the column so in this case we are using an, a schema from this graph and then let's specify that the type is object we know in python everything is an object even though it is string or number we can just make all of them are object and then this is the book and we can specify all the data will be an object and then the properties that we have is this one the title will be a type of string the authors will be a kind of array and we have the minimum item is one maximum item is five and the item is three the date will be a string and we have a kind of pattern if you join the class tax analytics tax mining in our department you will have you will learn this one we call it this is the regular expression okay it means the value will be a number of four between zero until nine because we know that the date will be four for example 2017 so it is four digit one two three four so the value will be four digit then its value will be from zero until nine and it will be a string and then for the publisher we have a string in this case okay we have the value of springer mit press and Harvard press we can define the schema with some additional parameters like say required so required means these three attributes are required so you need to fill in the data but the publisher may be null or you can just skip it the additional properties is false so it means yeah there is no other problem and book is required so because maybe this is a bookstore then you need to have at least one book and the addition properties is false okay when you try to compare with the xml what happened it's the same thing you can see that okay the title is the type is string so in the xml you also define the title and the type is string the outer list you specify in the schema like this one you have the complex type and then you define the sequence because we have maybe we will have the maximum five but in the json schema we have the type is an array and then we specify the item minimum is one and the maximum is five in the date we can specify with the format in the xml in the uh, json we specify with the regular expression 
in the publisher yeah we use the enumeration like this one it is in the form of list uh, in this case yeah we have another enumeration we can allocate with index so if you know about list then it is the index zero it is index one it is index two so it's also the same so yeah I don't know which one is better, which one is better than the other, but people try to utilize those two. Yeah. Whenever you use the XML, yeah, you need to know about the XML schema. If you know the XML schema, then you can easily understand the XML and then you can get the data or you can write the data. If you use the JSON, you can also understand the JSON schema and you need to get the JSON data based on the schema. Nowadays, there are many ways to convert. Let's say you have the XML and then you want to convert it to JSON. So you can change. So it is not uh, worrisome. You don't need to worry about your data maybe professor i have now my xml data so if i want to change to json is it difficult actually nowadays there are many tools to do this one so one one of the website is this one the freeformatter.com actually there are many other websites you can utilize so yeah they have the json formatter html formatter xml formatter and so on and then they also have the converter xml to json converter so if you copy and paste your xml this is xml copy and paste your xml and then convert XML to JSON. Then you will have your JSON automatically. Okay. So both of them are widely used. So at the end, yeah, you can choose if you want to use this format for your data, it's also okay. So I know that you, uh, some of you join the database so you can easily make the ERG. But for the team project, let's say you want to utilize the JSON or you want to utilize XML, that's also fine. But because I teach this one after the mid exam, that's why I do not allow you to make your XML schema or JSON schema because it will be make it will be complicated for you because you need to make your proposal before the mid design. But at the end if you want to use the JSON and XML, please feel free to use in your team uh, project. Okay. Okay.